So in this video, I wanna answer some questions from you guys that I've seen across different platforms from YouTube, Instagram, and TikTok. And just kind of answer those instead of answering them in the comment section. I figured I'd make a video answering those questions and some other common things um, that I see or questions I get as well. I don't know what it has been about this October, but it's been crazy busy. I have not been able to get out and ride nearly as much as I wanted to. I figured, hey, it's a beautiful day. I'm gonna take advantage of it get out on a bike, take a look at this fall foliage before everything turns brown, and talk to you guys, catch up a little bit, answer your questions. But one of the questions I wanna answer actually requires me getting off the bike to show you guys, it has to do with my helmet. But while we're on the way there, I'll answer the first question, and what exhaust am I using? Because I've done a couple different videos, and uh, just one where I was just uh, riding, and it's basically uh, the exhaust sound the entire video. So I don't have a full exhaust or anything. I have the stock pipes, but I did change out the mufflers. So I have the Cobra RPT three inch mufflers. It's their quieter version. So Cobra does have these and they also have some neighbor haters. And I was actually able to listen to these on a bike at a dealership, surprisingly, and they sounded good. I wanted something that was obviously gonna be better than the stock Harley mufflers, which is pretty much gonna be anything, but I didn't want something that was gonna be aggressively loud like my Reinhardts were on my Sportster. Those slip-ons were loud. And uh, so, and they sounded great. And you know, the, those loud pipes aren't bad if you're just riding around town for a little while, but obviously on this bike, I'm taking it on a lot longer rides and that loud exhaust just gets just kind of draining on your ears after a while so these are perfect because it's louder but not too loud so it's kind of perfect for me plus when i have the wife on the back she's not going deaf from the exhaust either i don't even think she wears earplugs but i do but i can still hear the exhaust and like i said it's not aggressively loud so that's what i'm using i'm just using the cobra rtp three inch slip bones i bought them off of a revzilla so they may or may not still be available on there so check them out if you want to go a little bit louder they do have like i said the neighbor haters so that's what i did i didn't want to go the full stage one because obviously budget is a factor the spike was not cheap and i didn't want to go a full exhaust i like the dual pipes i like the two and the two you know a lot of people go two and one in this bike and that's great my buddy's got one on his lowrider s and two brothers sounds amazing but that's not something i wanted um i like the two and the two look especially with the shorter bag on that side so i wonder where i can go where i'm not going to get stared at by people recording this section like this guy's just looking at me um let's see i guess we could just come over here screw it So one thing about recording in public places is people are out and if you're talking to a camera it's a little awkward but I'd rather be in the shade because it is kind of warm but we'll do it so that's the answer to that question what exhaust am i running just the cobra rtp slip-on mufflers and they've been great with the slip-ons um, if you don't know if you do just slip-ons and don't change anything else you do not have to do a tune so if you want to get a better exhaust than the Harley exhaust and don't want to spend a lot of money on the full system, get mufflers or slip-ons, and then you don't have to worry about also doing a tuner, and we'll talk about that as well. But let's uh, get off the bike, and we'll answer this next question. All right, we should be getting over here. I apologize for the wind. I'm just using the GoPro mic, so we'll try and knock this out quick. But another question I got is what helmet am I using? Well, I'm using this one right here that I've been using for probably the last year, and that's the Schubert uh, C3 Pro. And this is like a silver finish here. They do have a glossy black, a matte black, and then a white, I believe. Um, they were originally like $519, so they're kind of mid-range helmets. I didn't want something super cheap. I didn't want something super expensive like the Showies, as nice as those are, they were like $899. So this is kind of a mid-tier level and it's been great. These things claim to be the quietest helmet. 
I don't have much to compare that to other than my uh, Harley Davidson branded one. It's pretty comparable, maybe slightly quieter, but not enough to be like, oh my God, it's, it's a night and day difference. I still have to wear earplugs on the highway because I will get um, a lot of wind noise kind of on this side of the visor while they claim it to be the quietest maybe sure but um, like i said nothing to compare it to but i went with a modular helmet because i wear prescription glasses and it's so much easier um, with a modular helmet if you wear glasses i just kind of put it on like this so i'll show you how i do that so just flip it up put it on and then i don't have to really adjust my glasses any or anything whereas if I had a full face helmet, I had to take the glasses off and then trying to put them on in a helmet after you've put the helmet on is a little difficult. These sunglasses are a little bit easier because they're thin, but like my regular glasses, I can't get those things on straight uh, to save my life. So if you're somebody that does wear prescription glasses and are gonna be wearing them while you're riding, highly recommend into getting a modular helmet. Plus, if you're doing long trips and say you wanna gas up or something and don't wanna completely take off your helmet, you can lift this up, get some air, take a drink while you know, you're doing whatever. So it's nice because you don't have to take it off all the way. You can just flip it up and still be able to take a drink and like fill up gas and talk to whoever. Another thing I like about this helmet is it does have a kind of like most helmets nowadays, it does have a flip down visor uh, for sunglasses. So if you aren't wearing sunglasses, you can flip that down and just slides right there, flips up. Another cool thing on the visor is it does already come with the pin lock system. So that's this extra kind of visor piece right here. Um, you can kind of see where it pin locks in there. And that's basically just to help uh, prevent fogging, especially when it gets cooler out, you got the hot air you're breathing inside your helmet, and you got the cold air outside. There's like a little, gas chamber or something in between there that kind of helps prevent that now like anything else you know that will wear out so you got to kind of take it off and then clean give it a cleaning and put it back on but some helmets don't come with that automatically that's another like hundred dollar plus cost that you got to put on your visor but with this included in that price point um, it does include that pin lock system which is super nice and it does have some venting it has a little bit of venting here on the chin and up here it does not have any venting in the back like some other helmets do so not the best ventilation in this helmet but i don't get overly hot um, the pads in here are comfortable and they're like supposed to be cooling pads that dry pretty quickly and they do because i do sweat a lot so i'll notice that if i'm out here doing a video in the sun and i get on there um you know, it gets pretty wet, but it dries pretty quickly. Another great thing about this helmet is the ratcheting chin strap makes it super easy to take on and off. And unlike the D-rings that you have to loop around and stuff like that and then snap on, those are on the cheaper helmets. And I had that on my first one, wasn't a fan. Um, I definitely like this better. It's a lot quicker to get on and off. You can still work this with your gloves on um, in most cases, as long as you don't have thick gloves. So the ratcheting chin strap is something I would highly recommend looking into because it just makes it so much easier getting the helmet on and off quickly. And it does come with um, the ability to do comm systems. So I have the Cardo Talkback Edge, comes with some speakers. I really just use it to listen to music. I can take phone calls, but if you're going above like 50, it's hard to hear anybody. So I really just use it to listen to music and it's great because obviously the Lowrider ST doesn't have speakers on there and I don't want to mess with getting those aftermarket Bluetooth ones and and not being able to hear them anyway. Um, it does have a microphone right here. And then I just have, this is my microphone that I use for my GoPro. And then the chin mount for the GoPro is right here. So stuff I put on there for recording the videos. If I didn't have this channel, I probably wouldn't have that on there. But yeah, um, if you want some more details on the complete specs of the helmet, you know, look at Revzilla. For right now, these are actually on a closeout. So I don't know if they're just done making these or anything like that, but I think they're $3.99. So a lot cheaper than they were when I bought these. So I'm thinking about picking up my wife one just because it's a great helmet and closeout price of $3.99, really great deal. So again, this is the Schubert C3 Pro modular helmet. And so that's the helmet that I use and love it. It's lightweight. I think it's like three point something pounds. So under four pounds, which is nice because the other helmet I had was noticeably heavier. And especially once you add a GoPro to the front of it, that's a lot of weight. I know the GoPros don't seem like they're that heavy, but 
you know when you have it on here it just seems to kind of drag your helmet down and then that, that obviously fatigues your neck a lot more but just this helmet alone without the gopro comes in under four pounds um, but if you want the full specs um, i'll post a link to the revzilla where i bought it from and it has a uh, different color options for you. They are still available in different sizes. But yeah, that is the helmet. So let's uh, jump back on the bike and answer some more questions. And as much as I love these GoPros, because obviously it makes me able to make content like this, they overheat so quickly. Like this, I was using the helmet cam, my GoPro uh, 11, uh, for that little bit of video that I did off the bike on the helmet. And it overheated already <laughs> and it's not even hot it's like low 80s upper 70s but there's a pretty decent breeze out and the fact that it overheated in that just a little bit of time that i was had it on this tripod is insane you really if you're going to be doing a motor vlog you really need to actually be on the motorcycle and i guess get that wind um, unfortunately i i do have to use the media mod and that is basically a case that goes around the camera and i think that contributes to it because it basically just kind of doesn't allow it to dissipate that heat quite as easy and maybe even keeps it in more so um, i noticed when i do use the immediate mod with this camera it does overheat pretty quickly which is annoying especially since it's not even that hot and there was a breeze so i don't know why why i did that so yeah i love love these gopros but man they are there are issues <laughs> and sometimes it'll just stop recording and i have no idea that's always fun uh, i know a lot of other people have the same issues but you know there's the other action cameras out there have their quirks too so i guess it's kind of a trade-off like you know what, what are you willing to deal with i prefer the sound out of these it's just it's just really easy i just hook up my microphone and don't have to really worry about gain or anything like that it just is what it is and then i kind of fix it in post a little bit if you uh, are looking for an action camera do your research each one has its pros and cons but if you are going to be using a media mod on a gopro just know that if you're going to be recording in direct sunlight and not moving it will overheat pretty quickly now i do record in 4k so i have that going against me if you record probably in 1080 probably won't overheat quite as fast and then the battery life just sucks like this battery was fully charged and it's already uh, like 50 percent and i haven't even you know been recording that long so but it is nice that they exist and uh, i can make videos on my motorcycle so all right so another question i got is am i running a tuner and yes i am so i am running the screaming eagle bluetooth tuner i forgot the actual name of it but it's the one that's available um for this bike now i do re regret it uh, because like i said earlier with the exhaust if you're just doing slip on mufflers and not changing anything else like you're not uh, changing the air cleaner anything like that you don't need a tuner now when i put these on i noticed when i would really get on it i get some uh, backfire and i'm like well i wonder if i do a tuner if that'll help with that or not so i ended up buying the tuner and I don't know I haven't noticed a difference and it doesn't have a specific uh, tune for you know aftermarket parts it basically is specific for the Screaming Eagle stuff so the Screaming Eagle exhaust air cleaner and even their mufflers so there's no other options so what I did is I did a custom tune which you can do and basically what you do is you just hook everything up and keep the app open and connected to the tuner when you ride and there's like a grid and it basically tells you to just do a bunch of different riding styles so you want to go through a bunch of different gears different revs and pretty much do your normal riding and it'll kind of tune the bike based on your riding so i've only done that once i took it out for about 45 minutes did some riding back on these type of roads did some city stuff and then did a little bit of highway because that's usually what i do and then so i set it to that tune and haven't really touched it since so i knew i do need to experiment with that maybe try another mapping session just to see if anything changes but realistically since really all i did was the slip on mufflers i don't think i, I don't think it's really going to make a huge difference I, i'm still running the stock air cleaner on here so um, that's already a high flow 
intake so i don't really think changing that's necessary unless you want to go with something that's not quite as <laughs> doesn't quite as stick out but so yeah so i'm running the screaming eagle tuner but i definitely regret buying it because it was like 500 and some dollars and once you pair it to your bike it's stuck with that bike forever you can't use it on another bike you can't sell it so you're kind of stuck with it um which i guess it is what it is in case i ever do anything else to this bike all right i can use that tuner another bad thing is it sticks with the epa standards so you really can't get everything out of this bike that you want because of the lovely epa here in the u.s definitely limits you on on what you can do but so yeah so that's what i'm running is it necessary no don't waste your money i wanted to keep my bike in warranty but i don't know i i definitely would if i could go back and do it all over again i would not have purchased that tuner so another question that i saw come through is did i figure out what i wanted to do as far as a rise and pull back for the handlebars I have mentioned that in several videos that is like the next thing I want to change on this bike is the position of the handlebars because right now they're in the stock setup or configuration and for quick rides like this it's fine but longer rides man I really start feeling it in my lower back and I just want to be further back and have the handlebars raised up but no I have not figured out what I want to do obviously the cheapest and quickest version is going with a thrash and supply um one where you don't basically need to add cable extensions you just i think it's a six inch rise and a two inch pullback but it seems like everybody that does that ends up wanting more so i'm not sure i don't i don't want to be in that same boat because it's still like 500 some dollars for that riser setup i am not a fan of the tall risers the way it looks especially with these handlebars it seems like everybody's doing that and i don't know it just looks funny when they're up here with these long risers i personally would like to do larger handlebars like the mini apes or something like that just one to be a little bit different and uh, i think it just it looks better but with that i'm not sure how it would affect the handling of this bike so if you uh, are watching this video and have changed to different handlebars, let me know, especially if you have the Mini Apes, because I think they have the 10 inch Mini Apes for this bike. And I've only seen like one or two photos of people that have actually done that. So again, I think with that, you gotta replace obviously the handlebars, but you will have to obviously do the longer cables and pay somebody to do it because it's not really something I want to do myself quite yet. I think what I might do is this thing's going to be due for the 10 mile, 10,000 mile service here pretty soon. So I might talk to the guys at the dealership and see kind of what they recommend, um, you know, based on kind of what I'm wanting. And if they have seen any of these bikes with mini apes and how those are, or <laughs> just what they would say. But let me know your guys' thoughts too. Uh, let me know what you guys have done. My buddy who you've seen on the channel a couple times, he does have an S and he's got some taller bars. I don't know what setup they are because he bought it like that. Um, but it's definitely a lot more comfortable. His handlebars are a lot higher than the stock setup. Man, this is so annoying. I've gotten like... 20 calls today from telemarketers and political calls and stuff like that it is so annoying i wish there was a way that you can just i know once they call you you can block that number but then they seem to call you from another number all the time it's getting annoying but let's gas up real quick so we can go on more of a ride now i will not forget my gas cap that's sitting up here kind of like i did in a, a video where i went down to pittsburgh i uh forgot my gas cap because the pump i was at was broken Man, this pump is like moving significantly. <laughs> I don't know, is that safe? <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen a pump move like that, but whatever. So the next question did come from YouTube and says, how do you ride in different conditions? Like rocky, bumpy roads, sand, icy, or slippery roads. Is there a way you could prep your bike for that? Well, <laughs> let's talk about that. And so I am what you would call a fair weather rider. I pretty much stay away from those conditions. So 
if I know that it's going to rain, then I'm just not going to go ride or I'm going to take my truck or something. Um, sometimes you do get caught in the rain on the ride. I've done that. And so if you think you're going to ride in the rain or, you know, you never know when you're going to get caught in it, especially when you're going on trips, um, definitely have rain gear. Um, that's one thing I did in the video is one thing to have in your saddlebags is rain gear. You can get some budget friendly rain gear and just always have that in. That way, if you're out riding and hit some unexpected rain, pull over, usually can put that over your gear and you're good to go and then take it off when it's done. And then something you wanna do in any condition, even out like this, but always check the condition of your tires. Make sure you still have good life on them, like you have plenty of, of tread life left. And if not, you know, be aware of that because that will you know, dictate the type of riding you can do. Obviously a less tread, you have less traction. And if you know, if they're bald or getting pretty close to bald, then even on dry pavement, you're gonna have some issues. So you wanna get uh, some decent tires. And then always just make sure your tire pressure is good. You know, if your bike sits for a while, especially in the winter time, you know, you're gonna lose air, even in the summertime, like you, you never know. So always make sure you have proper air in your tires and you can easily do that with that Fantic uh, portable tire inflator that I did a video on. I just keep it in a saddle bag and you know, sometimes before I go on a ride, I'll just pop it on there and check them. If not, it's super easy to air up using that tool. So definitely tires and then just make sure everything's good on your bike. You know, keep up on the maintenance, um, make sure nothing's loose and you know, you should be good. So just double checking everything. Just do a quick once over before you get on your bike. Um, that's really all you need to do. You know, bumpy conditions, you know, it just kind of depends on your area. Really nothing you can do or prep for that other than making sure your tires are good. Uh, maybe adjust your suspension. Uh, there is a preload on the suspension, so you could change that. Not a whole lot you could prep for that. And then, you know, a lot of times that we run into, especially if you live in an area where it snows in the winter time is, you know, after the snow or even in the springtime, there's a lot of salt or sand in the road and just, being aware of that uh, because that stuff is super slippery um, you know I see a lot of videos on YouTube TikTok or whatever of people hitting gravel in the road and, and just wiping out and that's again where you want to make sure your tires are good and if you do see that stuff slow down um, don't slam on your brakes or anything like that or give your bike a bunch of gas just kind of coast through it a little bit you know on this type of road um, like that was a gravel driveway There'll be some rocks and stuff on the road so i'm constantly keeping a lookout for that if i can't avoid it i'll go around or move around it but sometimes you can't and you have to go through it just make sure you're not going to slam on your brakes or give it too much gas and just kind of be careful as you're going going through it but um yeah i mean not a whole lot else you can do to prep for that stuff but if you are somebody that does ride in the winter time or all the time year round no matter the conditions you know just keep up on your bike make sure your tires are good again <laughs> if it's gonna be bad weather i have a, a truck or my wife's car i can take i'm just gonna do that or just not go anywhere so that is what sucks about you know what's coming up winter is coming winter is coming winter is coming winter is coming, winter is, coming. is there are going to be a lot of days where i can't actually take the bike out because it's snowing or it's icy or even raining so Temperature doesn't really matter. I'll, I'll still ride if it's like, you know, above 32. Because with my jacket and everything, I'm fine. It's my legs that get actually are the only thing that gets cold because I just wear jeans. But other than that, the rest of me say is pretty warm. So temperature is not a big deal. Yeah, if you're one of those uh, diehard bikers that rides in any type of weather, more power to you. <laughs> That's just not me. So. You know, sometimes, especially after, um, in the wintertime, if it snows, melts, and then it warms up enough to, to go ride, you know, again, you're gonna wanna be careful and just pay attention to the roads because there's gonna be sand and salt. And then another thing I try and do is, if you're able to give your bike a quick rinse after that ride to kind of get that salt off of it, you know, it's not always possible, especially if it is below freezing, you can't really, you know, use your hose to, do your bike but if it's above freezing quickly just give your um, bike a quick rinse off just so that salt isn't sitting 
on your bike and gonna cause rust because you know these Harleys tend to have some rusting issues in some areas so as long as you can keep that salt off the bike you should be good so another question I got is what is the 0 to 60 on a stock ST well I don't know I'm sure you can google that I'm gonna try to figure it out as long as there's nobody behind me which I don't think there is um, it, it's gonna be a little bit difficult for me to actually get it I don't know I'm gonna ha hope that the camera picks up my speedometer down there and then I can't like press record and uh, stop on the stopwatch so we'll just uh, see what I can do here I think when it hits 10 is when I'll go and then hopefully I can see it in the video or maybe five wasn't the best takeoff but that was a third I got in the third gear so if there wasn't other cars on this road I would do three pulls uh, just to get a, a, an average but like I said this time of day there's more traffic so unfortunately there's cars behind me if, if in editing I'm able to see the speed and the time I'll let I'll post it down below but it's gonna depend on the rider too like I'm not the quickest at shifting uh, and you know it depends on when you shift too so there's a lot of variables on the actual 0 to 60 but this is a pretty much stock bike like I said I do have that Screaming Eagle tuner but I don't think it really did anything so it's pretty pretty much close to stock you know this thing's quick it does not it does not take long to get to 60 and 100 so um, that's what I love about this bike is that 117 engine even bone stock i mean this thing has plenty of power i like i said i have no plans on really doing anything performance wise to the engine for quite a while and it, it, this thing just gets up and goes and on the highway you know did a highway trip fifth or even sixth gear still plenty of power and torque to pass and honestly i <laughs> i have to purposely pay attention to not speed because this, this bike just wants to go and go fast and uh, if you're in an area with uh, cops that are just dicks, yeah, you're, you're probably going to get pulled over. So I constantly have to be like looking down like, all right, I got to slow down. I tried not All right, so in usual fashion, I had to stop and change the battery on the GoPro because it died on me while we were riding. So I wanted to point out some gloves I just bought. So I've been using these Cortec gloves and they've been good, but they're not good winter gloves and really they're not leather while well, they're nice and they're cool uh, especially for the summer they don't provide the most protection so i wanted to try some good like decent gloves so i'm trying i bought these odin manufacturing gloves I'm trying to find gloves online difficult because you can't try them on but they have a size guide on their website which is nice and they fit great and they're leather and they're perforated so you get some airflow in there but they should still be good for the winter time and i like them because the tips come off and you can use your phone and stuff like that but the problem i've been having with these and it may just be with i just got to break them in but when i have them on the bike i cannot feel the grip so i can't feel how much throttle i have or anything like that i don't know if it's because i just got to break them in or they're too thick but and i got a pretty thick grip here it's got the palm swell but i when i have these gloves on i cannot feel that throttle and i it's super uncomfortable to ride because i i don't know <laughs> if i'm gripping it uh, or anything like that so as much as i like these gloves and they do provide a lot more protection i don't i haven't been using them because i can't feel that throttle and obviously you want to be able to feel the throttle so Maybe I'll just have to wear them around and break them in and see if that'll change things or take them on some shorter rides. These things, like I said, they're great. They're the uh, Cortec Airflow. So these, these are great because they're thin enough where I can have plenty of movement. I could feel everything. It's just with leather gloves, for some reason, maybe it's just I'm not used to them. I don't know. I just, I can't feel the throttle. I've just been using these. So maybe I just need to, I don't know, break those in. But let me know what kind of gloves you guys recommend. Um, and if you can still feel the throttle with those thicker gloves on or not. All right, so if you guys are from the Kansas City area, you might know uh, where I'm at. So 
This is Hillsdale Lake. So not a very big lake or anything. Uh, it's just, you know, south of Kansas City on the Kansas side. And, you know, it's got they got some cool roads out here, uh, mostly two lane like this, but I don't know, you got some cool views of the lake, especially now with the trees changing colors and everything, cool views out here. So I've been riding out here quite a bit lately and uh, it's just kind of nice, really not a whole lot of traffic and I don't know, just kind of a nice peaceful drive. So the last question that we had is regarding the seat. Uh, somebody wanted to know my wife's basically opinion or experience on this seat. And I do have the Saddleman Explorer seat. Um, I did a video of our initial impression of the seat. Basically, uh, if you want to know, check that video out. Kind of go over the difference between this and the stock. And then her initial impressions on the ride. And she's been on a few, you know, several different rides. Nothing too crazy. Like, I think the longest we've gone is like an hour or so. Um, mainly we take it to like biker night. She'll come with, and stuff like that. And little rides like this. We'll just, you know, take like a 45 minute to an hour ride or so. And with that, she has had no complaints. Um, I ask her all the time, I'm like, how's the seat? How's the seat? Like, what don't you like? And she says nothing. She says it's comfortable. Uh, you know, luckily compared to the regular step up seat, it's got a lot larger um, area to sit on, and which is what I wanted. And she says it's comfortable. She has zero complaints about it. So I guess if she has no complaints, then it's got to be good because, you know, she would let me know if there was uh, something wrong or uncomfortable. So the fact that she hasn't mentioned anything means it's, it's definitely a, a good experience for the passengers. Another question, questions or comments that I get are in regards to the windscreen or windshield. So I've done several uh, videos on trying out different kinds. Most of them are on this channel. Some of them are on my original channel, the Boomstick Tactical LLC. I just never cross posted them. Um, but I did try out the Harley Davidson branded one that was their 10 inch. And that one was okay, but I like the flare of these. It definitely helps get that wind up and over you. Now, I do also have the Clockworks. I have a Clockworks 10 inch, and that one's great too. I don't use it though because it is a darker tint and I like to be able to see, I want to be able to see through the windscreen. With that in the day, during the day it's fine, but you know, once it gets dark out, you can't really see through that thing. So, and then the clear views I really like because you get a bigger rider pocket basically. So there's more coverage you could see um, just by that. And I did do a video, I believe it's on this channel, comparing this clear view large windscreen to the clockworks 10 inch and you know they i like them both you can't go wrong either way they both have the flared top and they're great they're roughly the same size um lengthwise but width wise you know there's about an inch more coverage with this clear with this clear view so you definitely get a, a bigger rider pocket with these and i, I just love it so i i while I have, I still have the Harley Davidson 10 inch too, and that Clockworks, I just prefer this Clearview. Um, and one thing I really like about Clearview is you, you know, they have obviously the different sizes, different um, tints that you can get, but you can actually try them out before you commit to it. So they come with like this film on there, and as long as you keep the film on the windshield, you can return it for a different size or just your money back if it's not for you. So if you are looking for a better windshield, I would highly recommend going that route because you know, the clock works once you buy it and it's, say it's not the right size, I'm not sure what the return policy is. May or may not be able to, but at least with clear view, the fact that you can actually try it out and if you don't like it, return it for a different size or just return it in general is a huge perk for reference and I've had a lot of people ask this what is my height and stuff like that so I'm 5'10 and have a 31 inch inseam but yeah so we are uh, coming up on the city uh, got to go through Gardner and then back down to Olathe so there are there's another lake that you kind of go around Olathe Lake kind of nice curves but you got to get through uh, this town first and 
I think it's about the time, what time is it? I think five o'clock, yeah. So everybody uh, who didn't get off work earlier is probably getting off work now. So I am losing battery on this camera. So I think we will call it a day. It's been nice. Uh, I, I like doing these moto vlog style videos just because they're easy and it's you know a cool way to talk to to you guys watching and i like i like watching these kind of videos i love watching other people do moto vlogs and it's kind of cool just uh i don't know just kind of cool videos to do and see and so let me know what you guys think if you like these types of videos i can try to do more as long as the weather stays nice you know i do do stuff uh during the winter time but those are a little bit further in between so while it's nice out and try to do as much of this as I can but unfortunately I'll be out of town all of next week and I'll be without a motorcycle it's gonna suck but and then eventually I got to get this the 10,000 mile service and since I bought it from a dealership in Wichita it's three hours away so they come up they actually come up and grab the bike and take it down to Wichita do the service and then um, bring it back up all free at no charge and I have that service plan, so I'm gonna keep doing that until that service plan's up. I'm hoping to take a motorcycle maintenance class at a local community college here. Right now it's currently going on, but obviously with a work trip, I would have missed a week and didn't wanna do that. So I'm hoping in the springtime that class will be available. So then that way when my service plan is up, I can do the maintenance on the bike myself and feel comfortable uh, doing that kind of stuff. So I was speeding in front of this cop. Hopefully he didn't notice. <laughs> uh, like I said, it's super easy to speed on this bike, especially when you're talking to a camera, you're not watching <laughs> as closely as you probably should. And the fact that he's slowing down, I don't know. Hopefully I don't get put over. But yeah, if you guys have any other questions, let me know down in that comment section. I do have a, a TikTok and Instagram. I don't do a lot over there just because I hate short form content. It's a pain in the butt. I'd much rather do long form videos on YouTube. It's what I prefer to watch and it's what I prefer to make. It's just better and I feel like you get more of a connection than the short form stuff. But I do have those uh, other platforms over there if you wanna check those out. But yeah, let me know if you guys have any comments or anything to comment on that we've talked about uh, in this video and we will catch you on the next one.